Okay, so now we're going to learn basically how to calculate a money stop. Now, I know I said that I'm going to be going over volatility stops and money stops in the next video right here. I have it written down for myself. But really, this is a money stop, and it's very simple to calculate. So we're going to assume that we're going to take a trade in good old dollar yen. And we have, we're going to buy $100,000 at 149 the figure, 149 even. Now, we're going to allocate $3,000 to our stop loss. Okay, so in other words, I'm taking $3,000 from my P&L, and I'm saying that I'm going to risk this $3,000 in dollar yen. So at what price, I say to my position clerk, at what price do I need to escape dollar yen at? Okay, um, and as I'm thinking, I really should start to also introduce you to what's known as R value, and I'm going to introduce you to that right now. It's very simple. Okay, so what my position clerk is basically going to do is he's going to take the $3,000 that I'm allocating is going to multiply it by a spot dollar yen rate, which is 149. Now, it doesn't really matter what you use, you know, 148 and a half, 149, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm just trying to get an idea of where $3,000 would be lost. Okay. And with, with fluctuations, it will not be exactly 3,000. You're going to see that in the math. So I take the $3,000 multiplied by 149 and come up with 447,000 yen. I take the hundred thousand dollars. I just mine at one forty nine the figure a hundred thousand. I am now long dollar yen. I and I'm short the yen. I'm long dollars and I'm short the yen. I'm short fourteen million nine hundred thousand yen. So I take my yen amount fourteen thousand nine hundred. Now the math is a little wrong because it should be negative and this should be plus. It's going to come to the same thing. You know, a negative plus a positive. You take the difference, keep the sign of the larger. Okay, so we're going to have fourteen million four hundred and fifty-three thousand yen divided by a hundred thousand. I am long at one forty-four fifty-three. So to prove that, if I take one forty-nine, the price that I'm long at, and I subtract. 144.53 the rate that i need to escape at i get 4.47 yen multiplied by a hundred thousand gives me my 447 thousand yen that i was willing to risk i divide it by the spot price of where i'm escaping and i come up with three thousand ninety two dollars and seventy eight cents now that is basically the same for me as a bank is the same as that 3,000. 92 bucks is not going to kill me. But, you know, I'd be silly to actually hold that trade going that far against me. However, this is a good point place to introduce R value, okay? And I'm going to do that right here. R value is the risk value. And I'll, and I'll, I guess I can, I can put this up underneath the, the YouTube. Where's the S? So at this point, I am risking 4.47R because $3,000 represents 4.47, 447 pips against me, which is four big, is four big figures and a half almost. Because each big figure is 100 pips. So it's four and, you know, 50 would be a half. So it's almost four and a half big figures against me. So my R value, my risk value is 4.47. So therefore, at a minimum in this trade, I should be looking for 4.47 R in return. So I need this thing to go from 149 to go up 500 points. 154. For me to say hey this was a good good risk reward but so our value is is basically what you are risking on that particular trade okay so now in this next uh, little scenario we're going to go over how to roll profits into a trade and we're just going to make an assumption we have forty five hundred dollars that um i am I made in euro yen. It doesn't matter where it comes from. If it was from another trade, that's wonderful because therefore I'm using the market's money, playing with the market's money to try to make more money. Or it's from your, your own P&L, which would be your money stop. Okay, this is still a money stop, but I'm using the market's money instead of my own P&L. Okay, so I have $4,500 from a previous trade and I want to roll it into a 300,000 sterling yen short. Now don't panic. Okay, the first thing that we have to realize is what points are sterling yen in? 
and sterling yen is in yen. So I need to figure out how much yen I got with 4,500 US dollars. That's the first step. So my position clerk would say, okay, we got 4,500. The average spot rate's 149. <clears throat> we'll stick with that 149. <clears throat> and that gives me 670,500 yen that I have to allocate to this trade. So if I take uh, my 300,000 at 182.60, what happened over here? Oh, let's just back this up over here. Let's just go backwards. It's going to give me 54,780,000 yen. Now I'm going to roll the profits in. So I'm going to be rolling in 670,500 yen. Okay. And now, if, if you get confused, okay, and you start playing with these numbers and you come up with something that is not right, and because let's say, for instance, if you subtracted 670,000 yen, you're not going to get 184, you're going to get like 180 something. Okay, so you just realize that you did it wrong. So you could put the you could put the the yen in, all right. So don't panic, all right. I mean, when I was when I was first getting doing this as a position clerk, I was getting screamed at by traders, and the the, the, the pressure was unbelievable. I would make mistakes and go, oh shoot, I was supposed to add that back in, but so therefore, you know, it's not 180, it's 180, and I would just add in what I, you know, I would take the difference of what I got, add in and go, hey, 184.83, okay. But anyway, so. You take the 54,780,000 yen, which is the 300,000 at 182.60, follow me, and you're adding in 670,500 yen, because that's what you got. You got 4,500 4, US worth of profits. That's going to give you 55,450,500 yen, as opposed to the 54 million. Okay, you divide that by the sterling. Uh, amount 300,000 you're short at 184.83 so how do you prove it how do you say oh shoot okay I want to risk 4,500 so I, if I go 184.83 in 182.60 out that's 2.23 yen multiplied by 300,000 pounds gives me 669,000 yen Okay, so I got I'm risking six hundred and seventy. That that's it divided by three hundred thousand uh, gives me my amount, my forty five hundred bucks, a little bit more than forty five hundred. Okay, so if I take my that what else I did was I took my six hundred and sixty nine thousand six six nine one two three divided by uh, one forty nine. It gave me four thousand four hundred eighty-nine bucks. I was just in forty-five hundred. So therefore, that's how you prove it. You take what you came up with, the one eighty-four eighty-three five, subtract from the initial short position at one eighty-two sixty, and that's going to give you the amount that you are willing to risk. Now let's do a million dollars. And the reason why I want to do a million pounds is because I want to show you how things change when you make position sizes larger. Okay, this is a 300,000 yen short position, and you're short at 184.35. If I can do the math, okay, I take a million at 182.60, that gives me 182,600,000 yen, right? And I'm going to add in my 670,500 that I have for the 4,500 that I'm converting, right? I'm becoming short now at 183.27. Notice the difference. I'm a lot closer to the marketplace than if I did a smaller amount. So this is also showing you that position size makes a difference. Because if you go larger, you're closer to, to the market. If you go smaller, okay, you're further away, giving you more, more room. Now, as you get better at trading, this becomes more of a functionality of like, you know, uh, I really want to put a large size on right here because, you know, my system is saying this and, and I have a good expectancy in my system and I'm sure and I'm just going to escape if I'm wrong and I'm going to lose that money. Okay, so 
But the point that I was trying to make here is to show you that when you go large, you become closer to the market. So now we're going to basically next, we're going to roll the loss into a trade and then we're going to call it stop for, for, for the time being until the next video. Okay, so part of the function of a position clerk, junior trader on a desk was basically to answer the question. I would say, look, we lost, he would say, hey, Tom, we lost $4,500 on that last Euro Yen trade. Okay. Um, and I'd say, okay, Joe, I want you to roll the $4,500 loss into my new position that I have right now. Okay. So I'm going to go short 300,000 sterling yen at 182.60 yours at 182.60 all right so he's going to take the 4500 dollars that i lost he's going to multiply by 149 the figure he's going to come up with that 670,500 yen i need to make back okay so if i take the 300,000 at 182.60 okay i'm going to get um and i take that that money out i'm going to have 54,000 okay I, 54,780. So I take the 54,780. I take out the yen that I need. I need 670,000 yen to get whole. I need $4,500 back. So I take that out. I'm going to come up with 54,109,500 yen. Okay. So I need sterling to appreciate. You know, actually, I need sterling to go down in the yen to appreciate. Okay, so I and if I, if I divide that by my core position of three hundred thousand, I'm short at one eighty three six five. So in other words, what what this is saying to me is I'm short at one eighty two sixty. I need sterling yen to go down to one eighty three six five in order for me to break even to get to recoup my loss. All right. Now, if if it only goes down to one eighty one thirty and I take it back, well, I'm I'm still down a big figure. I'm still down 100 points. So instead of 4,500, you don't have the difference, you know, but I, I made some money back. But in reality, what I needed to do, if, if I, I expect this to go to 180.36, then I'm even, I'm only even on the trade. I haven't made any money. I just made money back. It needs to go further down in order for me to start becoming positive in the trade. Okay, so the R value here is, you know, it's the same. It's a negative R value because I'm trying to recoup money. All right. So you need to know that, you know, R value is basically now where would the risk be on this trade? That that would be the R value. OK, if, if I'm short at 182.6, they go, well, how much money am I willing to allocate to this loss? You know, another two thousand dollars I'm willing to put in this trade. Well, then I need to calculate that. Like, where's my stop for three hundred thousand pounds? Would, if I'm allocating another two grand. So I, I would calculate that. That would be my R value just like up here, okay, where we said, this is the R value, all right? The R value is the risk, all right? So <clears throat> that's the R, it's the same thing with here, and I have to find out where my R value is here. Now, let's do a million dollar position, a million pound position, okay? And the only reason I'm doing the million pound position is to show you the difference, you know, because I'm at making the trade larger, I need to go a shorter distance down in order to recoup $4,500. However, if I'm wrong, I'm going to lose even more money. All right. So there's a double edged sword. This is all like tying leverage in to position sizing to everything is kind of right here. But it's it's all this is all like the basics, because really what we started out with was how much percentage of capital am I going to risk per trade? This is going a little bit beyond that because I haven't really added that into the equation of like, well, I'm only going to risk two percent of my capital per trade so at a bank you know i got two hundred thousand dollar a monthly stop so it's four grand you know if i'm risking two percent per trade okay so it's a little bit different than if it's an at-home trader and it's different than my style now but anyway let's do the million dollar position million pound position a million pounds of 182.60 gives me 182 million six hundred thousand yen i need to recoup six hundred seventy thousand five hundred yen when i do that and I take that out of my 182,600 and I divide by my million pounds, my uh, position needs to go to 181,92 in order for me to recoup the $4,500. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to end the video here because it's been quite long.
and I hope that you stood with me because it's really cool stuff. Um, the next video is going to be on volatility stops and money stops, which we really covered money stops, but we'll talk about volatility stops as a function of average true range. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.